it's a rainy day, cozy day. So even though I'm actually dressed for the day, <laughs> I'm in my, it's a bathrobe day because it's like kind of chilly. You might remember that I got this turkey breast for 99 cents. So it's a perfect day to cook it since it's cold and nasty outside. I've actually been craving turkey. I kind of wish the United States would switch to celebrating Thanksgiving the same time as Canada because I think October makes oh, more sense because then you have more time before Christmas. And you don't really need a whole lot of preparation for Halloween. But it'd be nice to have more preparation time for Christmas. There's like a ton of water in this. I guess because it was frozen. I'm going to rinse it because I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. So I rinsed it. <clears throat> I added water. And now I'm putting it in at 425 degrees to let the top kind of brown and then I'll cover it, put it down to 350 and just let it slow cook. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh, I usually do 15 minutes per pound, but this does also have the little pop-up thing. So I wanted to make pumpkin muffins and I'm making my own pumpkin spice, which I like to do because I would never use the pumpkin enough so it would get it would end up expired before I used it all. So what I need for this is three tablespoons of cinnamon, one teaspoon of nutmeg, two teaspoons of ground ginger, one teaspoon of allspice and then one teaspoon of ground cloves and I like to also do this because I tend to have these types of spices around the house but not always you know we use for example ginger you know you're using it for other types of recipes so you're going to have ginger in the house anyway so a lot of these or all of these actually I have in the spice for different reasons so I might as well be making my own pumpkin pie spice or pumpkin spice because it's just so easy to do and honestly very satisfying so I am kind of being exact with the measurements mostly because I don't do this all the time so I might as well trust somebody else's advice who does do it all the time so I need a teaspoon of the nutmeg. Two teaspoons of the ginger. I already put in the three tablespoons of cinnamon. Whoa. It's just like the taco seasoning. I really like my own taco seasoning better. I don't feel like that with the pumpkin pie spice because you can get organic or whatever. Not that you can't with the taco spice, but then you at least know what is exactly in all of your spices. All right. It just is fresher, you know, especially the taco seasoning. Love making my own taco seasoning. And with Pinterest and everything, it's just so easy to get these recipes online. All right, so there we go. And I'm just going to mix it up with my little baby whisk. 
get all the little lumps of, <laughs> actually, lumps of ginger out. And then I have my little baby jar to put it in. And luckily, thanks to you guys, I know where my labels are, so I'm gonna get my label first. I'm definitely gonna trim down my label because it's too big for that. So I'll just cut all these little decor curves off of it and make a square. Come on, baby. peeled it up just in case it was hard to peel off. All right, actually, put it back so I can write on it. Pumpkin spice. There we go, pumpkin spice. And I'm gonna put it on the side because if I put it on the lid, I won't see it. just put it in here and it's all ready for me and I bet you oh man this is way more than I would have bought in a store anyway which is interesting and what you could do is look at the expiration dates if those matter to you and you know you could put whatever is the most you know close to you expiration date so this is nine, June 9th, 2025. This one says April 2025. This one is December 2024. That's unfortunate. I'm going to write that up here. 12, 24, 12, 24. So I could do that just right here. 12 doesn't really show up. I'll have to get a black one out. Silver doesn't show on silver in a shocking twist. Uh, Best Buy. Yeah, so the most, the one closest to us is 1224. Yep. So if I really wanted to be picky, I'll write it right on the label. 1224. All right, and now I'm ready to make my muffins. Okay, I wanted to make pumpkin muffins, but realize I don't have eggs. I have one egg, I need three. So anyways, it's okay because I already made vegan pumpkin bread for Rachel, which we loved. So um, this time I'm gonna do it, but instead of do using the, um, what's it called, gluten-free flour, I'll use all-purpose flour. That's okay. So I'm really excited now that I have this vegan pumpkin bread recipe because then I'm not stopped. I got it from thebananadiaries.com. Yeah, the word the is in it. The banana diaries as one word, dot com. So it only calls for one cup of pumpkin, which is, this is what I have left over from when I made Rachel's. And then it also calls for banana, I believe. Da -da, puree, it calls for... Oh, maybe it doesn't. That's not the one I made then. Because mm, the one I made had banana in it. Pumpkin puree, sugar, brown sugar, oil, vanilla, sea salt, pumpkin spice blend, cinnamon, baking powder, baking soda, flour. Okay, let me go back because I have another one. Because I'd like to use it. Oh, banana, pumpkin banana bread. There we go. This is the one I'm going to make because I want to use up these bananas and I don't have enough bananas to do banana bread. This is from the Chestnut Bakery. Let me see how much banana I need here. Also, I can hear someone snoring. Everybody's asleep. <laughs> Robin and I are awake. Ava's at school, but Yvonne and Rachel are asleep. Yvonne's not feeling well, so not surprised. Actually, Rachel wasn't feeling well this morning. Yeah, I guess. And my husband, Robin, does have a bad cold, so I'm the only healthy one right now that's home. Let's see. I do take my vitamins, man. Because I ain't got time to be sick. 
Don't you hate? Oh no. Why did that just happen? I think my <laughs> laptop just died. Let me go get the cord. This is going great. I'm also eating chicken noodle soup. Isn't that perfect on a cold fall and rainy day? Scrolling, scrolling. Don't you hate how far down you have to scroll to make something? I missed the jump down to this recipe tab if there was one. Oh, here it is. Okay. Two medium bananas. Perfect. This is two medium bananas. Somehow I clicked on Walmart. All right. What does it say to do first? Line your loaf pan and grease it. Make vegan buttermilk by adding the soy milk to apple cider vinegar. I'm going to use almond milk instead of soy because that is what I have. So. Honestly, I could use real milk, but why waste it? So, that looks like three-fourths. And then add a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar, which of course is also great for digestion. I love apple cider vinegar because that's all we used growing up. All right, smell that. Set that aside, get my loaf pan. This is what I hate. You spend a lot of money on spray oil and then if the sprayer breaks. So I can still kind of use it. <laughs> also, I got paper towels that divide into four pieces. I didn't do it on purpose. All right, and then I'll try with the parchment. Hey, what's up? What's wrong? Oh, sorry. I cut it while I was out because I needed something to put my face in. Oh, God, I'm so tired. Yeah. Both kids are in my room. <laughs> Aww. My King Jimin just randomly gone in there. Aww. After all my time, I got to stay with me. <laughs> yeah. All you had to do was fall asleep. They had to think you didn't want them. Wow. Do you have stuff with the lentil soup too? Or no? Oh yeah. I could do the lentil soup. You know, that soup is so bossy. All right, I'll do that. Thank you. What's a rice? Okay. We have rice in the fridge too. All right, I just had a hot flash. Now I need to get this. Okay, so we're adding the two bananas to the vegan buttermilk. Whoops, I'm making a mess as usual, because that's how I do. And then the one cup of pumpkin. Whoops, okay. Kind of regretting, put it in a Gladlock bag. I wish I would have put it in a dish. Would have been easier to get out, but okay. At least I didn't waste it and it's getting used. Okay, now we're gonna add the oil. I wish they had the um, 
measurements where they have what you're adding instead of having to go back and forth here. All right, how much you? It says vegetable oil. I always use avocado oil because that's what I keep in the house. Of course, vegetable oil would be cheaper. Sometimes I keep vegetable oil just for baking. I don't have any right now, but I like the high smoke point of avocado oil, but it doesn't have a strong smell like some others that have a high smoke point. Um, you know, it doesn't have a flavor. All right. Then I know vanilla. Yeah, one teaspoon of vanilla. Let's see. All right, let's whisk it. It does say to whisk, so let's follow directions, Karen. I haven't baked for so long, more than a year, definitely, maybe two. I mean, the girls started really baking in 2020, and so I didn't see a whole lot of reason to do it. But I do actually enjoy it. Now, let's see. Add in plain flour, caster sugar, which I am using. I'm trying to remember what I use. I think I used brown sugar before. So let's do brown sugar. Or maybe I'll do raw. No, I'll just do brown sugar. Let's see. I'm gonna see how many times I can scroll up and down. So everything dry is now gonna go in. So we got two and a half cups of flour. One, two, one half. One and a quarter cups of sugar. teaspoon of the pumpkin spice I made which isn't very much I also like having these wide mouth because it's easy to get your spoon in there to measure and then um, half a teaspoon of cinnamon Yum, yum. Whoops, that's a little extra. I wouldn't care, but because there's already cinnamon in the pumpkin spice. Half teaspoon of baking powder, quarter teaspoon of baking soda. in there shouldn't there flour sugar oil milk puree banana vinegar spice cinnamon nope that's weird okay well who might have question now we're gonna mix this puppy up just says mix until combined and you have a smooth batter but don't over mix So if you made this and you need it to be gluten-free, trust me when I tell you, use the King Arthur gluten-free flour that has the one-to-one -one ratio and it comes out lovely because Rachel and I already did that. Let's see. And then what we did was we cut it up and we wrapped each piece when, you know, when it was totally cool, we wrapped, wrapped up each piece in saran wrap. See that? 
popped it in a Gladlock bag. And then each day when she wants to have it for breakfast, she just pops one of these up where she can like thaw it out overnight and then pop it in the microwave. Yeah, so um, this works out great for her because when I'm making it vegan and gluten-free, she's the only one eating it. You know, sometimes we like to try a piece, but in general, she's the only one eating it and she's not going to get through it in time. So this is, this has really uh, frozen and thawed out very well. I'm going to get this all combined. We also put chocolate chips in Rachel's, but I'm not going to do that in this one. But I might ice it. They have an icing here that I think is just... Um, whoops, I keep going the wrong way to get the ingredients. Oh yeah, it's just icing sugar, which to me is confectioner's sugar, and almond milk or soy milk. Or you could use regular milk, you know? Because you're really just liquefying that... Um, sugar. And if you wanted to, you could even make it as a buttercream, but I think I'll just make it as an icing. And I won't put the icing on it. I'll put it in the fridge. And then when you want to thin it out, you just add a very tiny amount of the milk, you know, and you can put it on your piece of pumpkin bread individually. That way it doesn't just soak into the bread, you know, and then it's not as good later because I'll see how much of this gets eaten in, say, two days, and I'll probably freeze the rest, just like I did with Rachel's. It just works so good. All right, I'm going to get a fork because I've got some sugar lumps because I used the brown sugar. Also, you can taste this without worrying about salmonella. Here's my banana fork. I'm just going to go through and find any little dark... Oh, you know what it is, actually? It's not sugar. It's actually banana. All right, I feel way better about it then. Also, Rachel is way better at the parchment paper than I am. <laughs> but we're just pouring it in. Oops, I need my spatula. Actually, let's use a spoon since it's right here. And then we're going to make some lentil soup, which I've already shown you, so I'm just going to make it. I don't know if I didn't cook this long enough or if it just was super moist, but if I had to do it over again, I would do it in muffin tins because I find when something does have a hard time cooking through, it's best to make it as a muffin. So we're cooking this and it's, oh dear, I shut the oven off. 375 oven. Oh yeah, 350 actually. I saw 180, but that was Celsius. All right. Recently, I became very attracted to the idea or the phrase slow homemaking. And quite honestly, I didn't even quite understand what people meant by that phrase. So I would watch a few videos just to see what people were thinking when they said slow homemaking. I was attracted to that because I tend to rush around all the time and I'm trying to learn to slow down and take things one at a time to give myself permission to take breaks, to not be in a hurry, to be okay with projects lasting a lot longer than my expectations originally were. And I mean longer by days or weeks or months, you know, and not getting so anxious if I can't get a task done from start to finish without stopping. But as I watch videos about slow homemaking, what I noticed was it was more about growing your own vegetables, growing your own herbs, uh, making sourdough bread, making everything from scratch, being out in nature. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Absolutely not. I mean, I love those videos, actually. They look kind of lovely. They're very re relaxing to watch. But I have to recognize that when I put slow homemaking titles to any of my videos, you might think that's what I'm talking about, and it's not what I'm talking about at all. And then I thought about, well, gentle homemaking. Maybe gentle homemaking makes more sense to say because you know the idea is to be gentle with yourself 
And, you know, but even those videos, you know, and for some people, like, if you love to slow down and make pumpkin bread from scratch, you should absolutely do that. And if you find it relaxing and a definition looks good for it to be slow homemaking, that is a wonderful thing. But it's okay if you don't make your own pumpkin bread and you just go buy a loaf at the store. Or you don't eat pumpkin bread at all because you're trying to, you know, watch your calories, you know. You don't have family living in the home. Maybe it's just you and your husband. Maybe it's you by yourself. So I just think I want to just tell you out front what I'm trying to accomplish in life is to slow down, to be more gentle with myself, to stop the hurry, to stop the racing. What am I racing for? I don't want to get at the end of life and be like, oh, my house was always clean and so I won at life because I know that's not going to be the definition of winning at life to me. So I'm trying to slow down, enjoy things, and to be more gentle with myself. Don has asked for lentil soup, and this is such a good day for soup. And lentil soup is so quick and easy, and also healthy. So, what is a mom to do but make a batch of lentil soup? I also happen to love lentil soup, so I'm not crying over it. It'll also give her something to take to work tomorrow and maybe even the next day. And I know her sister loves it too, so maybe she'd like a bowl when she gets home from school. Who knows? Oh, my oven's preheated for the pumpkin bread. Does that look good? I'll put that in there. And I should probably look at how long. It says 60 minutes until the top is firm and slightly browned. Um, toothpick comes out clean, if it comes out wet, five or ten minutes. Okay, that's pretty typical, pretty standard. So, I've got the timer on. I should probably check my turkey. This tends to be how I do things. I used to always have these big cook days. I haven't done it in so long. And it's always cold weather that brings it on. Nope, the pot hasn't popped. The top hasn't popped. The button hasn't popped. And the tinfoil is falling off. Alright, in case you missed the video, and I'm going to make a short for this, I think. All that is in this recipe it's skinnyms.com protein packed lentil soup. Did I find it really protein packed? Not really. Okay, a tablespoon of olive oil. You gotta know I use avocado, two cloves of garlic, one onion, yellow onion, two carrots, 15 ounces of diced tomatoes, one cup of dried lentils. I use red because that's what I have. 15 ounce can of black beans, teaspoon of chili powder, half a teaspoon of cumin, half a teaspoon of black pepper, half teaspoon of kosher salt, half teaspoon of red pepper, but I'm going to back that up to a quarter, four cups of chicken broth, I'm going to use, or four cups of vegetable broth, I'm going to use chicken because that's what I have, and last time I used a combination of chicken and beef, no one even notices, it doesn't matter what broth you use. I'm doing three carrots because they're small, they're very short, they're, we got them at a farm stand, So yeah, all I'm going to do is cut these up. You're going to saute the onion and the carrot, add everything else in, and cook it. And it's like 20 minutes for lentils to cook. So you can simmer it until it's dinner time. Obviously, the longer it simmers, the more flavor it's going to have. And it is a great soup to have next day. So as soon as I get the carrots and the onions all chopped, then I'll start it in the pan. And once the onions were translucent, then I'm adding everything else in. <laughs> it's literally that simple. So a great one-pot meal. Because, you know, fall, it's a great baking time. It's a great time to practice, you know, slow living. But also, it can be very busy. It's just, you know, if you've got kids or grandkids that are in activities, there can be games and just... You could be on the run, you know? You could make this in a crock pot, I'm sure. 
Do I know how long? No, look up how long it takes to cook carrots and lentils. Like just Google that. Cause that's all you'd have to worry about. And then, you know, you could just have it on warm or you could cook it on the stove, which is what I've done before. You've seen me do that with the chili it is cook it on the stove and then put it in the crock pot on warm. And then you have it all day, which I actually might do this if I want to keep it warm until my daughter Ava comes home from school. So she'll be home and I don't know what time it is now. It's 10 minutes of one. So she'll be home. Oh no, she's coming home quick. And then she has, she's actually not coming home. She has an appointment that Robin is taking her to. I'm telling you, you've been keeping track of who needs to be where. <laughs> I need a personal assistant. That's just parenthood though, you know, or if you're helping your kids with the grandkids, getting them to their appointments, their activities, which honestly would be a dream of mine. I wish I was doing that. Maybe it will happen someday. knife I got at Macy's. I just was browsing around one day and they were on sale and I was attracted to it because it had a cover and this is a sharpener. What is the brand? I don't even know because it meant nothing to me. Joseph Joseph Stainless Steel. Whew, the onion's getting me. Whew, all right. All right, I got everything in here. If you weren't here for the video, make sure that you wait till like the last five minutes to put the beans in. Because if you put them in now, they're just gonna break down. So I'm bringing this to a boil and then I'll put it on simmer. While everything is in the oven or on top of the stove, I'm just getting a little bit of work done. I had a little bit of laundry to put away and then I'm going to fill up the dishwasher. Boy, do I love it when my dishwasher is empty and I could be putting dirty dishes right in there and not getting a huge build up of dishes for the end of the day when I'm too tired to deal with it. So it always means a lot to me when I can just be cleaning up as I go. Oh boy, because as the day goes on, I get less and less energy. I am definitely not a night person and lately... I completely fizzle by about 4 o'clock and then I muscle through getting dinner ready if I'm getting it ready that day and then that's it. I'm done being constructive. So the turkey was finally done. There's the pumpkin bread. It looks amazing. It tastes really good as well. And here is the lentil soup. And you can add more broth if you prefer it to be looser.